guys. Sorry I'm a little late. Have you ever tried to do too much in one day? That was me today. <laughs> I was doing my club video. So the, anybody that's watching this part of my club, my uh, card club, you'll get the video tomorrow. I've got it all done, edited. I just need to do a couple things that take a couple hours. So it's going to be too late by the time this is done. So I'll see who's on here so far. Oh, hi, Robin. And hi, Kathy from Colorado Mountains. Getting any snow up there? I bet you are. <laughs> Hi, Crystal and Rita from Wisconsin. And another Robin. So the first Robin is my friend here in Indiana. And then Robin Hardesty's in the hills of Kentucky. So I've got somebody in the mountains of Colorado and the hills of Kentucky. Sounds pretty. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and get started. Make sure I'm not missing. I want to make sure that scrolls up. Sometimes it likes to not do that for me. I might have to reset something. That looks pretty good right now. So I've got people on Facebook and YouTube, so that means I'm live on both. That's good. So let's go ahead and get started. The reason I'm late, I got a new camera because I know my phone hasn't been looking really good. I've got to do some weird things. So the picture's not as good as it normally is because of this app I have to use. Well, the I couldn't get the new camera to work, so we're back to the old way. So hopefully it'll all look okay for today. I'll get it working for next week. Oh, good, it is working. Oh, hi, De Mark. Okay, so I always say hi to Robin. Oh, hi, Marlene and Jeanne and Deborah. Just in time, you sure are. <laughs> okay, I feel a little crazy, but I think we're ready. Okay, I always hate it when I'm late, but thankfully it's only a couple minutes late. But I hope you guys all had a great Thanksgiving. I know I did. Had a nice long four day weekend. Um. Our daughter, we've got two daughters and a son. They're all adults. The oldest lives just a few minutes away. Uh, our second daughter, Stephanie, is married and lives about an hour and a half away. Her and her husband came and spent the whole four-day weekend with this. Whitney came over and our uh, son, our youngest, he still lives with us. So I, we had all of our family all four days. It was great. I loved it. But now back to work. And this is fun, too. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and let's do the door price before we get going here. So let me switch the screen here so you can see. Oops, I almost showed what this week's is. These are the ones from last week. Um, everybody that commented during the live got, it got put in my wheel, and I'll uh, do the winner for this right now. So let me go ahead and go to a different screen here. And then we'll do this so we can just see that. Okay. So this is everybody. This is my live door prize wheel. So that's everybody that commented during the live last week. So let's go ahead and click on that. And let's see who's won. Get my trusty post-it notes out here. Oh, that's somebody new. Jeanette Adams. Congratulations. I haven't, and I know for a fact I do not have your address. So I'm not sure where you're watching from. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, click the contact me link below in the video description. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can just message me on uh, through my uh, Facebook page and give me your mailing address. Either way, that works. Just make sure you get me contacted so you can um, so I can get your mailing address and get those mailed out to you. So congratulations. Let me go back and we're gonna see who. Got this. Oh, hi, Patty. Glad you're here. Hi, Donna. Nice to see you, too. Not really seeing you, but you know what I mean. <laughs> here, I'm going to get rid of one of these screens. That might help. Whenever I have to share a screen, it makes it so the my movements are a little funny. Okay. You've got a cold, snowy evening, Patty. I forget where you're at. I should remember that, but yeah, we're not getting any snow here. And it's actually in the 50s today. It's been kind of different. It's nice, but super windy. But my husband went outside. He had the day off. So he's got, uh, I think, all of our outside Christmas stuff up now. So that's nice. Okay. So now this is for everybody that watched the live and the replay. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this one up. Oh, New York. That's right, Patty. I don't know why I couldn't remember that. Yeah. New York's been getting hit. Are you getting that great, that uh, lake effect snow? I remember that was supposed to be happening this week. So now I'm going to go ahead and go to the next wheel, get that big, getting a little better at this. And now let's do the door prize for this one. So this is everybody that commented during the live last well, two weeks ago, actually, 
and the people that watch the replay. So this has got a lot of names on it. Oh, Renee Atkinson. I have got your club members. Atkinson. Okay, make sure I got her. Okay, congratulations, Renee. Now we'll go back to me so I can close that, and that should make the video work a little better. <laughs> oh, I do want to switch because I want to tell you about this week's door prizes. I was going through some of my old embellishments, and I found a couple full packs I'd never opened from the last holiday mini. So I thought, ooh, just in time for Christmas. They're a little different. Like the cards I'm making tonight, totally different uh, color combo for Christmas, They're, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it is a lake effect snow. I had a feeling, Patty. Yeah, I heard that's getting pretty bad up there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you these real quick. Yeah, I can tell the screen's working a lot better. This one here, this was part of that gnomes uh, suite that we had last year. I'm pretty sure it's called Fine Sparkle Adhesive Back Gems. Now these, of course, can be for non-traditional Christmas cards, but these can be for all year round because these are really neat colors. Spring would be really good with these colors. So I'm going to turn this over. I can't remember what, oh, here, this is, nowadays they put the name on the back and I forgot this is last year. Fine, yes, Fine Sparkle Adhesive Gem. So everybody that's watching the live tonight and comments and lives in the United States, I do keep it to just people in the United States per Stampin' Up! Rules with product. Plus it helps me with the shipping when I mail these. So everybody, all of you that have commented so far here during the live are going to be put in the drawing that lives in the United States right here. So I'd love to see where you're from those of you that are outside the United States, I love that you're here too. Wish I could do door prizes for you guys too. But if you want to comment, let me know where you're from. It's always neat for all of us to see where you guys are from. So that is for everybody with the live. Now, everybody that's watching live and watches the replay, I always want to make sure, boy, this has not been open, but it was in three different sections. So now it's looking kind of messed up. But these, I always love these. These are called adhesive back sequins and gems. You can see how they're different shapes. Well, these two are about the same. But so, so pretty. I think actually these are sequins, but they're really sparkly. And then these are some gems. But I think this is Fresh Freesia. I can't remember what this color is. That might be Coastal Cabana. Close to Coastal Cabana, I know that. It might be a retired color, but it'll definitely work with all our colors. Well, hi, Lorray. Glad you're here. And Deborah from Pennsylvania. Glad you're here, too. So this is for everybody that comments during the live and watches the replay. Because we want to get those people. I don't. I want to make sure that people watch the replay that comment to also get it in on a door prize. Okay, so we're done with the door prizes. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, let me tell you how this class works. I don't have any pictures to show you on news. Just don't forget, if you look down, if you're watching YouTube, look down the video description. You'll see links to, if you want to subscribe to Paper Pumpkin, my monthly online card club. I've got information for uh, the new club. Up right now, I'm going to be uh, featuring the Magical Meadow Bundle. I keep forgetting the name of that one. And that's something that's retiring. So take a look at that. I don't have sneak peeks of the actual cards yet. I'm working on that tomorrow. Um, oh, hi, Ann. Watching from New Hampshire. See, I think I saw, yeah, I saw Debbie's already. Um, so all the links are down there. If you're watching on Facebook, you can look up at the top of the page, and there's a Learn More uh, button at the top of my Facebook page. Click on that, and that has a bunch of links on there to my online card club, my uh, current host code offer, which is this class, and all that fun stuff. So you can get all the information there. But let's go ahead and go here. If Oh, let me get that out of the way first. So you can see the little ticker at the bottom. That gives you the host code that's uh, going on right now. I had changed it from last week. Oh, thanks, Patty. I'm glad you like that. She was uh, asking about the um, Be My Valentine stamp set. It's a, It's got a whole suite. It is so cute. And it's going to be in the upcoming uh, oh mini that comes out January 4th, I do believe. Yes. So uh, she was asking about that, and I told her I had met, done a video. So I'm glad you like that, Patty. Oh, hi, Mimi. I'm glad you're back from Kansas. Okay, now let's go back to this. I've got... For a $40 order using that host code, you have to use the host code if your order is under $150 before shipping and tax. That way you'll get, uh, I'll be able to afford to give you these card kits. Because what I do, I that does give me Stampin' Rewards, but I use all those Stampin' Rewards to be able to get give you all these free things. So um, like with these pearls, 
I get these with my the stamp and rewards I earn. So that way I can give away free things to you guys. So that's why I have you use that host code. So if it's under the $150 before shipping and tax, make sure you use the host code. So a $40 order before shipping and tax gets you the card kits and you get two of each. And I do any embossing for you. There's no die cutting on these cards because it was a stamp set instead of a bundle. And then if you bump it up to a $50 order using the host code, you'll also get these pearls. You kind of saw those just for a second. These are the 2022 to 2024 in color pearls. I really like these. Now the colors aren't exactly what I'm using here, but they coordinate really, really well. So that's why I picked these out. Oh, hi, Christy. You're busy crocheting and wasn't watching the clock. I haven't crocheted for so long. I like to crochet. I need to start doing that again. It's a, uh, tomorrow it's going to be rainy. I was going to say, it's kind of a nice night to sit down and do that kind of stuff. It's so windy, but it's nice and warm. It's unbelievable how warm it is today. So $40 order, get the card kits. I keep getting sidetracked. <laughs> the $50, bump it up to $50, just $10 more. And you will also get a full pack of the pearls. And the pearls are not included in the card kit. So if you don't have these and you want to make sure you bump it up to the $50 before shipping and tax. Okay, we are ready to make cards. Here is the first one. This is why I wanted to change my camera because I can tell the colors aren't quite right. This app that I use changes the colors in my camera on my phone. I use my phone on my recorded videos, perfect colors, perfect image, but this app changes everything. So that's why I'm trying to get my new camera to work. Oh, hi, Michelle. Glad you made it. We're, I'm just starting on the first card. So you just missed the door price part. You can uh, see those if you want to uh, um, watch it the beginning after the live is over. So these colors don't quite look right. This is actually Melon Mambo. Oh, hi, Ann. Yep, she's from Arizona. I wish that that looked right. I thought I was working on it. It looked okay on my computer, but then when it starts going live, it changes the colors. This is a really pretty bright pink if you haven't seen the Melon Mambo, but that's what that is. So that's the card base. Oh, that makes me mad. So that's why I wanted that camera to work and I have to, I'm going to have to have more time to play around with it, but you'll get the gist of it. So this is the card base, five and a half by eight and a half. I'm going to go ahead and fold this, get those corners lined up. There we go. Get my trusty bone folder. You could definitely just use your thumbnail, but the bone folder works so much better. It's that crease really nice. So like I said, these are non-traditional colors. This, this one has the most non-traditional colors. So I've got the Melon Mambo, and this is Crushed Curry. But kind of hard. That looks a little closer to the color, but still not quite right. The DSP I'm using is called Mary Bold and Bright DSP. Oh, and for those of you who are new, DSP means designer series paper. That's what our uh, Stampin' Up's uh, pattern paper is called. So I've got all that. So this is the DSP I picked out. This is retiring. You might can check that out in the mini catalog. Um, you can also go to my online store and then go to the last chance uh, page and I'll show everything that's still available because everything that's on the last chance list is while supplies last and um, or by uh, January 3rd, whichever comes first. So it could sell out before January 3rd. Okay, so we've got the card base here. I'm going to do a little stamping here. Now there is some coloring to be done on these. I'm going to be using watercolor pencils. Now, I'll go ahead and name off all the colors I'm using. And I'm going to try to keep them because we've got two sets. We've got watercolor color pencils, assortment two, and assortment, I mean, assortment one and assortment two. There we go. So let me, I'm looking at my little cheat sheet. I've got basic gray. That's in the first assortment. I've got early espresso. That's the first assortment. So all of the, the first five are first assortment. So basic gray, early espresso, the melon mambo. Uh, Real Red, and Daffodil Delight. Now, once this live is over, the next few days, I will have posts popping up. If you look down the video description on YouTube, you'll see the links. I can't do any links on Facebook. But if you go to my YouTube channel, go to this video, there will be links to the posts, and I will have these listed for you in the posts also. So these are all from Assortment 2. This is Crushed Curry, Garden Green, Granny Apple Green, Night of Navy and Flirty Flamingo. Okay, so those are the all the pencils I'm using. I have not gotten my watercolor pencils out forever. So I thought, okay, that's how we're going to color these for a change. I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you can use them. I need to find, oh, there it is. It's already started. I'm covering things up. So this is a piece of basic white that's two and one quarter by four and a quarter. Oh, let me show you the stamp set. 
I always get antsy. I want to start making the cards. I forget to show you what I'm featuring. So there is that cute stamp set. This is also retiring. I checked earlier today. I didn't check right before the video, the live started, but this is uh, not on low inventory or anything. It is still available. It is so cute. I love those little animals. So I was just knew I had to do the last Christmas because this is going to be the last set of Christmas cards. The next two lives will be uh, oh, ones that you can use all year long. So this will be the last Christmas. I, when you get too close to Christmas, by the time you got the card kits, it'd be too either right before Christmas or right after. So that's why this will be the last one. So I'm going to grab that giraffe. I'm actually using every single stamp in this stamp set. When I had one left over, I'm like, oh, I got to use it because I was just, I'm like, oh, if that close, I got to use them all. So I'm going to use the memento pad. Tuxedo black is the color, in case you didn't know. And whenever I use this, I kind of twist a little bit. It actually inks the uh, stamp up better. If I just pounce on it, it doesn't seem to um, ink it up as well. And I'm going to put this right in the center. There we go. Whenever I'm at an angle, I'm always afraid I'm not going to get it in the center. <laughs> there we go. Isn't that cute? Love it. Now, I'm only going to color some of this because I've got one already completely finished because I didn't want you to get bored sitting there watching me. You know what? Let's go ahead and finish the stamping first. I'm going to grab a piece of lemon lime twist. This is a one inch by two and three quarter inch. And the way I got the banner, oh, I don't know if you can see, there, you can see it better that way. I used the banners. Let's see, what is this called? Banners Pick a Punch. This is in the annual catalog. Let me get the light on there better. So you've got two different ends that you can use, and this is the one I used here. And you can do um, half an inch, three quarter inch, and a one inch strip in, uh, in each one. So that's how I got this, and I will do that punching for you so you don't have to have the punch to get that banner. And I'm going to grab a May Your Season be one that's festive and fun. And I'm going to use a shaded spruce ink pad. I'm actually only using three ink pads, that Memento, Shaded Spruce, and Poppy Parade. So I'm going to ink this up like so. And I'm going to stamp this pretty much in the center. Okay. There we go. I could have done it in black, kind of jiggled it a little bit, but that still looks okay. So there we've got that. I could have used black, but I wanted to use a color. So shaded spruce looks good on the lemon lime twist. Okay, I do. Oh, I do have one more thing. There is a white piece. This one is a four by five and a quarter. This is, oops, get back up on the screen. Four by five and a quarter inch piece. And I'm going to stamp a partial of my cute little giraffe. So let me grab my tuxedo black memento again. I'm just going to make sure I've got the neck done. I'm going down farther than I know I need it to be. I kind of want the star, maybe maybe the tip of the tree, just as long as I get the star in his head in. There we go, like a little bitty tip of the tree. So that's going to be the inside, and I'll be coloring that in. Actually, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and color this one in, because this one I did not do ahead of time, and it won't take that long. I'm going to grab my Daffodil Delight and my Crushed Curry. Looking at this tip, this looks like it's a brown pencil, but it is the Crushed Curry. Um, this is an old set. I'm not sure if it might look different now when you, if you buy a new set. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my daffodil light because it's the lighter yellow. And I can actually color in the whole giraffe. I can even color over those um, oh, circles because I'm going to go over it with a darker crushed curry. But I'm going to try not to. But if you want to go real fast, you don't have to. If you scribble into the circles, no big deal. Because I'm going to be able to make them darker with the um, crushed curry. Now on this card, I'm just using the pencils. I will show you a way to use it with the blender pens on the next two cards. But this one looked good just using the pencils. So, so this is the old fashioned way of coloring with colored pencils. So all of the little dots of the giraffe, I'm gonna use the crushed curry. And I'm kind of using a little pressure on it to make it darker, make sure it's definitely darker than my Daffodil Delight. So I'll get all of those colored in. So now that you know how to do the whole giraffe, I'm not going to bother to color on the big one. Oh, and I'm going to use the crushed curry on the star too. Because I wanted it to be darker than his mouth since I've got the daffodil light for him. I felt like, even though I'm seeing the lines, I don't know if you can tell that in the video, but 
I'm seeing the lines of the pencil, but I think it looks cute. Now, when they're larger images, I kind of like using the blender pen, and you'll see that how that works here in a minute. Oh, hi, Heather from Washington. I'm glad you're here. Oh, thanks for sharing. I appreciate that. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my real red pencil, and I'm going to color this in. I'm going to leave the uh, trim white and the little ball on the top white. I'm just going to color this in. You're going to have a Santa hat. And there is a little bit of the uh, tree there, so I'm using Granny Apple Green, and I'll color that in. So that's how you color in the inside. So he's all ready to go. I didn't want to do the full giraffe because I want to still have plenty of room for the, um, oh, anything I want to write on the inside. So I'll bring this in just to show you a little bit of how I colored some of it. And then I'll show you the final product. The uh, tree I colored in with granny apple green. You kind of saw that with my tip. So I'll just color here. So I'll just color the whole thing with the granny apple green. And then with the ornaments, I'm going to do show you a couple tricks. This is Knight of Navy. I'm going to lightly, using light pressure, color the whole thing with the Knight of Navy. And then there's a little line, a little, little line right here. I want to make it a little darker. So I'm going to put some pressure on it and color that in. And there we go. So I've got two different shades. Hopefully you can see that. Boy, I wish I could have gotten that other camera because it would have shown up a lot better. So that's how I did a two-tone effect on all of these. Now, you can also to do different colors. On this one, I'm going to grab the, um, oh, let's see, what did I use? I think I used real red on this the top part and the bottom part of this ornament. And you can color these any color you want. You do not have to do the colors I'm using. And I'm doing Melon Mambo on the inside and I'm going to make that red just a little bit darker. So now I've got my two-tone effect there. So you just keep coloring all those the way you want them. I've got my blue. So I can do a dark blue. I'm going to do a lighter blue here. The actual blue in the paper is bushel, uh, blueberry bushel. But this Knight of Navy, you can get different shadings with it. It just depends on how much you color color it in. So this is kind of looking more blue, blueberry bushel to me using a lighter touch. So don't fret if you don't have the exact color, just something that goes close. Early espresso does the trunk. And then I've got the um, basic gray I use to uh, do the little bucket that the tree's in. And then color in I'm doing this super quick because I'm going to show you the original here. This is probably the last thing I'm going to color. And then color in the bow, the red. And just keep coloring everything in, different colors. And the magic of television. There we go. All done. Isn't that cute? Let me get a little closer. So I love using the two different yellows, the crushed curry on the dots and the daffodil delight. So you just make it all the different colors that you want. So that's it all done. I think the giraffe might be my favorite of the of these. So I'm going to grab, there, there's my card base. I'll put that over here. I've got another piece of Melon Mambo. This one is three and a half by four and a half. And that's what this is going to go on. So I'm going to turn this over, grab my seal here. This one's almost gone. I'm probably going to put a new refill in here. I did my videos for club the, today. I thought sure it was going to run out then. Now, this one is going to go on the far left. Oh, thanks, Anne. I'm glad you like the colors. Oh, thanks, Christy. Okay. There's always such a big delay. You guys probably type that in as soon as I showed it to you. <laughs> so I'm going to put this here. And now I'm going to grab this piece of DSP. This is that Mary Bold and Bright DSP, one by four and a quarter. You can use whichever side you want to, but I like the ornaments for this one. So I'm going to put some adhesive on here. Now, see the border here on the top and the left and the bottom? That's the what I want here. So the, if they're, well, it doesn't matter. They're going every which way. Um, it doesn't matter if this doesn't match up completely. We're going to be putting some ribbon, or I'm going to be putting some ribbon on this. So I'm trying to get the border to be about the same. Well, let me do it this way. It's be a little easier. So I'm kind of looking at the border around the giraffe to match up with this one. 
That's not too bad. So I put this on. I know it looks a little cockeyed, but that's okay. I'm going to take a piece of ribbon. This is Parakeet Party. Even though that's not a green that's in it, it matches the pearls. And it actually kind of looks like some of the greens in these lights. But this is the uh, Parakeet Party Metallic wo Woven Ribbon. I'm going to grab my Terran, uh, Terran tape. It didn't sound right when I first started saying it. <laughs> oh, thanks, Mimi. Isn't that giraffe adorable? I love him, too. He's cute. We all need a giraffe around to get that star on the tree, don't we? <laughs> I definitely need a ladder to get to our, ours. Ours is just a regular seven foot, I think, tree. It's not real tall, but I definitely need a step ladder to get that star on there. Okay, so I'm making sure that this covers up that gap. So that's why I didn't care if there was a gap there. Put this over here. I can't remember if I told you the size. It's a six inch piece. Go over here. And get that tear and tape there. Okay, so that is ready to go. I love the bright colors of this. I'm more of a traditional Christmas fan, but I really like this too. I like to change it up a little bit. So that, I, I like that. Okay, so now I'm going to grab the adhesive. Uh-oh, am I at the end yet? Hmm, I have to, oh, there we go. Just about to get that refill out. There we go. Now I want to take that paper off. I'm going to make sure it's on really good. And this take your pick tool. I'm just kind of picking at it in the middle. Not too close to the ribbon though. So I do an end or get too close to the ribbon. I tend to get the adhesive to come up to not just the paper backing. Get a hold of that. There we go. Now I'm going to grab this piece here. This is a four by five. I keep getting out of the video. Sorry about that. Four by five and a quarter inch piece. Oh, thanks, Don. I'm glad you like him. And this is going to go right here in the middle. Now, it's not um, perfectly. These are a little narrower than this, but that looks good. Just get it in the center. You don't always have to have the border to be completely the same. And I'm going to go ahead and put this on the card base while I'm at it. Now, the coloring takes a little while, but putting the, um, and it's not bad. If you like to color, just sit down, put a Christmas movie on, and stamp all your images and color all of them if you're going to mass produce this. But actually putting it together goes super fast. Oh, thanks, Becky. Glad you like it. Okay, so now we've got this on there. Kind of got a cockeyed, but it's all right. Now I've got this. I'm going to turn this over, and I'm going to put some dimensionals on it. I thought I'd pop this one up. And I'm just going to put one on the top and bottom and then put one in the center. Take the paper backings off. And it's going to go right over the ribbon. Not quite centered, though, because if I center it, it's going to cover up the tree, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to line the top edge of this with the top edge of the Melon Mambo mat. Get it over so I can still see that tree. And I'm laying it down before I push it down all the way. That looks pretty good. And put that down. Go ahead and put the inside of the card in. Oh, now I know why I keep getting out of the video. I forgot I'd moved my stand back because I needed to do that with a new camera, which didn't work. I'm sure I'll get it to work tomorrow. I just try to do it too soon with the video. Okay, there we go. Oh, hi, Paula. Oh, you're fine. This is. The dishes washed from dinner. Oh, you are so good. <laughs> I've still got dishes in the sink I need to do. <laughs> so there we go. This is just the first card. So you'll get to see the last two cards. Oh, thanks, Deborah. I'm glad you like the card. Thanks, Susan and Polly. I missed your comments. Glad you guys are liking it. Now, I've got one more thing. I want to put some bling on it. So it ended up being, I went back and forth. This one would look good with either the parakeet party or the... um. Oh, sweet sorbet is actually what this color is. I decided to use a sweet sorbet. And I'm going to grab one because this kind of goes with the melon mambo. I think it looks just fine because sometimes our embellishments may not look exactly like the color they're supposed to look like. So they end up coordinating with a few colors. There we go. So we got to get a little bling on there. So there is the card. So there's the first one. So let's get ready to do the next one. Oh, thanks, Christy. I'm glad you love it. Thanks, Ann. 
and Marlene. Glad you guys are liking it. Okay, I'm going to put this over here. Get my pearls out of the way. Let's get the second card out. This one is going to be using the hippo with his sleigh full of presents. So let's go ahead and get some stamping done first. Yes. Let me grab my paper here. Get this ready for stamping. This piece of basic white is three and a quarter by two and a quarter. I'm gonna grab the cute hippo. Oh, thanks, Rita. I'm glad you liked it. And yeah, this set is so cute. If you like cute Christmas cards, this is the one you want to get. Just adorable. Okay, I'm gonna stamp this near the center. Doesn't have to be perfect. I always have to remind myself if I try to make things too perfect, it's handmade. It's okay if it's not perfect. There we go. We don't want it to look like a machine did it. So this one is going to be using the pencils, but in a little bit of a different way, I'm going to be bringing in the blender pen. So the way to really show how this works, I'm going to do the hippo. The other coloring is pretty close. It's the same as what I did before. I might show a few things, but let me bring this. Well, I'll bring in the giraffe back so you can see what the difference is. But I want the huskies, or is a husk? Not husk. I just went blank. I went tusk. There we go. Husk is corn. <laughs> so I'm going to color this in with my basic gray, but I'm doing it really dark. And I want the rest of him to be a little bit lighter. So you know what? I'm going to get this out of the way for right now. I think it works a little better without having the cushioning when you color. So I'm kind of making the edges a little darker. I'm not going to do the inside of his ear yet because that's going to be pink. I didn't want it to be all gray. So I'm kind of going dark around the edges of it. Because the neat thing with these, these are not regular colored pencils. They're watercolor. So you can do watercoloring with it. And then I'm just going to lightly go over the center. Okay. So sometimes I will leave that completely white and kind of blend it. And then I end up losing a lot of the dark. And I still want some dark there. So I'm going to grab my blender, uh, blending, blah, blender pen. Get, kept wanting to say blending brush. And I'm going to go over it. What it does, it wets down. So I don't know if you can see, you can see how the, there's some lines there. I'll show you the before. Now I'm going to pull some of this. It instantly starts um, breaking up the pencil because it's water soluble. So you get that watercolor look. So all of those lines I had are going away. Yeah, it kind of blended a little more than I wanted it to. So you can kind of see how now it's all gray. But I kind of wanted the a uh, few places to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to come back in and put a little bit here along the edge just to make it a little bit darker. And I don't even think I'm going to use the blending brush because I, I think it was still a little wet. So that gave me a little shadow there. I might dark lighten it up a little bit. That's another thing. It will lighten it up a little bit when you put the blending uh, blender pen on there. If you want to make this lighter, I kind of want to make the center part a little lighter. So there, I'm just going over it a little bit more, and that takes some of the ink away. So that's how you color that in. It'll be the same thing on the bottom part of his body. Just make it darker and then lighter in the center, and then use your blender, blender pen to do that. Then I use Flirty Flamingo. And since that's small, you really don't have to use the blender pen. I'm going to go ahead and do that anyway, just to make sure all the lines are out. And just to give you a rehash, I'm going to go ahead and do the whole hippo. A rhinoceros. I've been calling him a hippo. He's a rhinoceros, isn't he? My goodness. I get to working on stuff. I think he's a rhinoceros, right, guys? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Oh, thanks, Robin. I kept calling him a hippo. I don't think hippos have that big horn. That's a rhinoceros. Okay. So we'll color this in. I think I've been calling a hippo even to myself. Kind of going around the edges. This guy's probably my second favorite after the giraffe. And I'm just going to lightly do the center just a little bit. So I've got all of these scribbles just everywhere. I'm even kind of making it look a little more scribbly just so you can see how much the blending pen, blender pen works. So I'm going to go over this again. I'm just doing brush strokes. I'm actually not scribbling. So it's like using a paintbrush. So I'm going to color all this in, and it is taking away all those um, lines that I put in there. 
and it looks like I painted it. There we go. And now it's all smoothed out. Isn't that cool? I love, I've got to remember to use my pencils more. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> I thought I was right. <laughs> I don't know why I kept calling him a hippo. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to grab real red and granny apple green. So that's what I used for my, um, oh, for his scarf. So I'm going to kind of go back and forth. I'm going to do red here skip a stripe and go red here and there's a little one right here this one i'm going to go here skip another one skip another one and i do the same thing across here you just alternate the colors you've got these stripes so i'm gonna i didn't want to just make it one color i thought it looked cute doing a little separate okay now with it being little I really don't need, well, actually, I'm seeing some red, I mean, some white space. If I want to look more like the rest of it, I can come in with my blending, blender brush. Dang it, bl blender pen. <laughs> I don't know why I'm forgetting that color. Now I'm going to do the green first. It doesn't matter, but do the same color. Because when you get ready to do the other color, make sure you clean it all off. There was a little bit of green there. And then I can go in and just lightly go over the real red a little bit. Now, I am using the Mento um, ink pad. Those, if you get it too wet, it will start bleeding. I didn't want to use my stays on. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting about the pencils, Christy. I, I really like them. I got to keep remembering about them. So now that's what I did for the whole scarf. This is going to be done with different colors. I'm going to show you what I did with my uh, little birds, though. I'm going to take my Knight of Navy. I'm going to color the whole thing in. They're small, so I'm not going to worry about a lot of shading. I'm going to color them in completely, but I wanted the wing to be a little darker. So I'm going to go over the wing using a little more pressure. So you can kind of see, hopefully you can see that the wing's a little darker than the rest of his body. Then I'll take my blending blender pen. Maybe I'll get this name right once during the video. And there we go. Just kind of get those lines off of there. And there's my little guy. So I did that with all three of those. And they all have different colored hats. So I'll show you that in the original. And I want to show you, like I said, with the little ones, you really don't have to use the blender pen. I said it right. But um, I went ahead and did that. Anything really small, don't worry about it because you, you can't see the lines when it's really small. But I do want to show you the difference with one of the presents. So I'm going to use my Flirty Flamingo. I'm going to do color this in. I'll just do one. Color both sides. But this will show you the difference. If you look close, I would, hopefully you can see that. I'm probably showing you all this and you can't even see it. Boy, that camera is really stinking. Okay, so they're just, take my word for it, bunch of lines. <laughs> so I definitely want to use my blender pen and color that in and just makes it nice and smooth. Boy, I wish I could have gotten that other camera because I can tell this is not showing up very well. But this is all lines all over the place and that's nice and smooth. So the blending blender pen works really, really good. The camera is just not doing it justice. Sorry about that. Okay, so if you have watercolor pencils, play around with them and you'll see what I mean. It's really, really neat. So I just colored all of these in and here's the final product. So I used all the same pencils. The pencils I just named off at the beginning of the video, those are the ones I used on all of the cards. So there we go. So I thought that looked cute. So that is all ready to go. Put that to the side. Let's see, what else do I want to do here? Let me grab the card base. Now we've got the, oh, well, let's get the stamping done first. What am I thinking? I'm going to grab this here. This piece is a three and one quarter by half inch piece. I'm going to grab the stamp that says Happy Christmas Wishes. I'm going to use Poppy Parade this time. Ink this up. Get this as close to the center as I can. Actually, up and down is where you need to make sure it's the best. Oh, I got a little bit of red right there. You know what? I think I'll be able to cut that off. We're good. Because I didn't want this to just be one long stretch or strip. 
So I'm going to cut this. I'm going to kind of do it at angles on purpose. Let's do this. There, cut that off. That looks good. So I forget to do this sometimes. Something that's long, you can just cut it and, and intentionally don't do it straight. If you try to do it straight, it's going to look crooked. <laughs> so now I've got these in separate pieces. So that's what that looks like. And bring that up a little closer. And then I'll put these over to the side so I don't lose them. And then, okay, so that is all. No, I take that back. I do need to do a little more stamping on the inside. Forgot about that. This is another five and a quarter by four inch piece. And there is one little bird all by himself. Oops, I forgot I stamped him inside. I didn't have to show you how to color a bird on the front since I'm doing this here. So I'm going to grab my Knight of Navy again. I'm going to color the whole bird doing a light touch. Oop, I forgot it does a little better without the mat. And then I'm going to do the wing darker. So I'm using a little more pressure. It doesn't have to be that much darker, just a little bit darker. Then I'm going to give him a little red hat. So I've got my real red. Color that in. Leave the little snowball on top white. And I decided to have a scarf be the same color as his hat. You can use another color, of course, if you want to. And then his little beak, I'm using my crushed curry. Color that in. Now, I'm not going to worry about using the blending blender pen with the beak. But I am going to use it. If I can find where I put it. Oh, there it is. And go over the blue just a little bit. So it looks more watercolor than just using pencils. Clean that off, and then I'm going to do the red and his hat. Get the ink off of there and get that a little closer. So there's my little guy. So I'll go ahead and get him on the inside. Oh, take that back. Let's get this card folded. This is Poppy Parade, five and a half by eight and a half. And get those corners lined up. Oh, where'd I put my bone folder? Here, here's another one. Oh, now I see it. Okay, so this is ready to go. This is going to be a horizontal or landscape card. So put that there. I'm going to go ahead and put the inside in because I know me. I will lose it and cover it up somewhere. So make sure my little bird is showing. You could stamp more in here, not just that little bird. If you want to put a few birds in there, you definitely could. There we go. So there's the inside. I am using on this card and the next card, the Christmas Tidings embossing folder. That's what it looks like. So it's one of those. You can use it horizontally or vertically because the words are going different directions. So it doesn't, that's the one nice thing. That's why they didn't have to make it a six by six. Because on my next one, I'm going to have it more like this, actually more like this. But, um, Hopefully you can see, let me, there you go. Sometimes when I angle it better, you can see them better. So it's got like Christmas. It's got some images on it. It's a really neat folder. It is retiring and it's actually one of the ones on sale. It's like $7 and something. I can't remember the change. So, and it is still available, at least as of this morning. But I really have had a lot of fun with this one. I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. I'm going to make it so that, um, Actually, there is a right and wrong for the horizontal. So if I did it this way, all of the horizontal words are going to be upside down. So you definitely want to make sure you've got them right side up. And normally I would have put the DSP on first, but this is still going to work. So I've got that there. Got a piece of the fa la 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 la. This is also from that Mary Bold and Bright DSP. This is a two by four inch piece. The dots would look really good too. Either one will work. So I'm going to go ahead and put this. Oops. Oh, it's almost on the end. Let's see. I'll be very surprised if it makes it through the class. And I'm going to put this right here. I'm going to leave a little bit of green, not a lot, on the left side. There we go. So I've got that on there. I'm going to grab this. This is going to go on this piece of uh, Poppy Parade. It is three and a half by two and a half. Can't remember if I told you the size of this one. Three and a quarter by two and a quarter. Put this on here. 
And I'm going to put this on with a regular seal. I'm not going to do dimensionals on this one because I'm actually going to pop up the greeting again. Because I popped up the greeting on the other card. Now it's gone. Let's hurry up and change this out. When you see that red all the way up there, you know it's gone. <laughs> There's my refill. I guess one good thing, you get to see how fast and easy this is. You don't have to wheel anything. You just take that whole cartridge out, the whole refill out. There's a, you can tell this is a smaller little piece and this is the larger one. So you look at this, there's the smaller hole and there's the bigger hole. So you just put them together like that. And then pop this back on. And it's ready to go. You do need to wheel it some until you see, actually the glue is already up there. You usually have to wheel a little bit until the glue gets right here on the end, but it was already ready. There we go. Ready to keep going. And then I will put this pretty much, yeah, I guess I did put it right in the middle. Had a look at my first one here. Let's put that there. Now I'm going to grab my three pieces for my greeting. And I think I'm going to use, I think the regular ones will work. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to grab my mini uh, dimensionals. And I'll put one on each end. I love having two uh, sizes. This one could have actually probably used just one big one, but I'm going to go ahead and put one here in the corner. And I'll put another one here in this corner because I don't think one would hold it very well. I mean, probably wobble too much. This one's a little bit longer, so we can just put one on each end like we did. For the first one, or I can. I keep saying we because I know later on some people are going to be making this along with me. <laughs> okay. Now, I don't want that. It's going to be happy. It's going to be over here, happy. Just kind of angle them different directions. This one's, I put this way. And then wishes, oops, not upside down though. Kind of like that. So I'm going to turn this over. Where did I put my take pick tool? There it is, covered up as usual. <laughs> get those paper, oops, I went too hard. Let me see if I can get, there we go, that came off. End up taking off the whole dimensional. Okay. And this will go on about right here. And I'm good, just going to lay it down again. I'm not going to push it down in case I want to move it. And make sure those are pushed down good. Oh, there we go. And then this will go at an angle. I want to make sure I don't cover up any of my images. And I'm okay if it goes over the green layer a little bit. Just make sure it doesn't go over the card uh, base, the Poppy Parade card base. And then this one goes about right here. You know what? I think that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and push it down. So there we go. So if you don't want to use that long one, just cut it up. Oh, good, Melissa. I'm glad it makes you smile. <laughs> Aren't they? I just think that's cute. This set is a lot of fun. Hate to see it retire. Okay, so we've got this ready. Now I'm going to get that bling. Oh, there it is. Now this one, I went back and forth because um, I've got some blue with my, uh, oh, birds. But then I just got to thinking, I think I'm still going to go with the sweet sorbet to kind of go with the poppy parade. Last time I had that kind of go with the melon mambo but it actually goes with the poppy parade too so i think i'm still going to stick with that if you'd rather go with one of these this is starry sky and this is orchid orchid opulence i think either one of those would still look good if you wanted to kind of match up with the birds but this time i'm actually not going to use i'm going to use the same colors i did my first one and oh there it is so i'm going to take this and i'm going to put them around this this almost reminds me of almost a Christmas tree, except for this is smaller down here. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to put a couple down here. Always use an odd number. There we go. So that is the second card. Let me get these out of the way. And yes, I wish it would, you could see the real colors. That camera is not doing very good. Oh, thanks, Jeanne. Thanks, Becky. Glad you like that. Okay, so that is the second card. I actually got these cards done on Monday. I was proud of myself, but then I had to work on clubs. So that got me behind. <laughs> but that will be done tomorrow, I promise, my club ladies that are watching. Okay. I've already got everything shipped out, so that is on your way. I did that yesterday. Okay. Now, grab my last card kit. Now, this one is going to be mainly greens. So we had totally different Christmas colors with Melon Mambo and Crushed Courier, the main colors, and Lemon Lime 
uh, twist. Then I've got uh, lemon lime twist and poppy parade. So at least we have red and green, but they're different red and greens than a lot of people do. Oh, thanks, Anne. I'm glad you like it. Okay. And Jeanne, I can't remember if I told you thanks. Thanks. I'm glad you like it too. This one is going to be Granny Up. It's got to be three different shades. There are actually three different shades in the um, Mary Bold and Bright DSP. This is Granny Up Green. Then we've got Shaded Spruce here. And this is Lemon Lime Twist again. And the reason I picked those, because the paper that I picked out, it's got all three greens in that DSP. This is a four by two inch piece again of that Mary Bold and Bright. So I'm going to go ahead and since I've got the card base out, go ahead and get that folded. Corners lined up. Oh, thanks, Robin. Yeah, I like the watercolor pencils too. I don't know why I keep forgetting I have them. Okay. Put that there. And I can't remember if I said thanks. <laughs> I think I did. I come back and look. I'm like, okay, who did I say, say something to? It's hard to keep track sometimes. Okay. Now let's go ahead. I'm going to do the uh, stamping for my images again. And I did color them ahead of time on something else, but I'll give you a few pointers like I did on the other two cards. This time I'm going to use the last two images, the little moose. Now I know I've got that one right. <laughs> and the little beaver right here. So grab my tuxedo black and mantle. I'm going to start off with the little beaver. Now I'm not going to worry about coloring him on this front one because I have to color him on the inside. I'm going to stamp him on the bottom left corner. Now, I could have used a wider piece of the cardstock, but then it was going to cover up too much of my uh, DSP, and I didn't want to do that. So this guy, even though we don't see a hill, it's kind of like he's standing up on a step or something. So I'm going to kind of bring him down. He's kind of wrapping around the beaver. I don't know if you can see that or not. He's kind of on the edge. Hold him down. And there, so he's kind of standing up. And he's looking at the good dessert that he's seeing. He's wanting some of that. Okay, so I will start doing a little bit of coloring on this one. And, oh, you know what? I will just go ahead and stamp the inside of the card again, too. Now, this is going to be another a vertical card like I normally do, not horizontal like the last one. So it's still four by five and a quarter. And I'm going to stamp the little beaver. I do have a greeting to stamp. I'm going to do that one later. And I kind of liked him in the bottom left corner because the way he was facing, I thought it would look kind of funny putting him over here. Now, I'll go ahead and color him in and not worry about the front. I'm going to grab my uh, early espresso. And on him, I'm going to do him light. So this is going to kind of be like a, what I did with the, um, I'm trying not to get his teeth. I keep coloring his teeth. And on my, the one I have all finished, I end up coloring over his teeth and he still looks fine. So don't worry if you do what I just did, what I did earlier. This time I'm going to try to keep his teeth white. And just color lightly on the main part of his body. Okay. And I'm doing scribbles on purpose because I'm going to get that blender pen back out. Now I wanted his tail to be darker. A lot of times when you look at a beaver, their tails are darker. So I'm going to color it in harder. I'm not using a light touch anymore. I'm pressing down a little hard. And now you can see how we've got a light and the dark on there. Gla grab my blender pen. And I'll get all of those scribble lines off of there. Oh, I just covered, said not, don't cover, color his teeth. I just colored his eyes brown. Oh, well. Don't do that <laughs> when you make yours. And I'm lightly going over here because I want to keep that tail darker. And, oh, I forgot. To, let's get this. I always want to have grid paper under there so I can clean that off when I want to change colors. And then do the same thing as I did with that scarf. Candy canes are red and white. So we'll alternate. Yeah, I think it'll go this way. So there's one. Skip one. Make it red here. Skip another one. Red. Now, one thing with this real red... Um, pencil, I've noticed it looks really, really light when you first do it. So a lot of times I will go over it one more time to really make it look red. But that's why it works with the Poppy Parade um, color too, because once you use a blender pen on it, it lightens it up, it actually kind of looks Poppy Parade. But just keep 
coloring it in more if you want to. I'm just kind of going over it just a little bit, not much, just to make sure there are no lines. So pretend like his eyes. I'm thinking I'm going to go over the eyes and see if I can get him a little lighter. <laughs> can't believe I colored his eyes. Oh, well, his teeth are white, but his eyes are brown. <laughs> so there's how you color him in. But now I'm going to bring the moose in. I think I'll leave him there, too, because I want you to see the difference. So I wanted him to be a little darker than my beaver. That's why I made him his body lighter and his tail. So I want his antlers here on top to be light. So I'm going really light again with the early espresso uh, pencil. I love just using different pressures can give you different shades. Take my blender pen. I think I'm finally remembering what I'm using. And going over it to get rid of those lines. So now we've got the antlers a little light. And I want him the rest of him to be a little darker. So I'm going to color over here. He doesn't really have his, he's got his eyes closed, so I don't have to worry about making his eyes brown. Kind of going dark around the perimeter of him again, like I did with the uh, rhinoceros. Color in his ears. And I am using more pressure again because I want him to be uh, darker than his antlers. And just lightly put some of there in the middle. Then I'll take the blending brush, blender pen. I talked too soon, spoke too soon. And I'm going to get all of this blended in again. There we go. So now his body is a little bit darker than his antlers. And I can go in and add more pencil if I want you to make him even darker. But I'm not going to worry about that. So that's how I do the bottom part of him. And then the basic gray is what I used for his um, hoofs. So he's got a hoof here, hoof here. And he's got a little bit showing right here under the plate. And there is a little bit of his um, leg, actually arm for this picture, that needs to be brown because that's coming out of his sweater. And then I'll go over with the blender pen again, just to smooth it out. So I'm seeing white lines I don't want. And then with the uh, his sweater, I'm using uh, granny apple green. And I wanted the tops to be a little bit darker. So I'm doing his the top of his sweater darker and then going lighter on the rest of it. I have to admit, it's kind of neat when you use the blending blender pen because you don't have to worry about You can just scribble. You, with the giraffe, I was making sure I didn't scribble too much. With the blender pen, I don't have to worry about it. I can just scribble it all on real quick because I can smooth it out again so you don't see the scribble lines anymore. There we go. And then I just used flirty uh, flamingo on, and on the dessert, left the top white. Did I'll get a little closer here. The hollies with the red and the garden green. So here we go. There, there's the one that's all done. And it almost looks yellow, but I promise that is garden, uh, granny apple green, I mean. So there they, are, there they are, all done. You can see how I made him lighter, so they're not the exact same color. And, oh, hi, Nathalie. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, from France. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so I'm going to put this to the side for just a second. Now I'm going to stamp my greetings. Let me bring in my... Stamp and Pierce mat again. Got shaded spruce. And a little something for you with lots of love. This is the last stamp in the set that I haven't used so far. I love it when I can use every stamp so that way I can show you what they look like. So I'm using my shaded spruce. I'm going to put this up here near the top corner. Try not to move my paper here. Stamp it. And now that's ready to go. We can put, get ready to put that on the card. I've got all the stamping and the coloring done now. So I get that. Oh, I think I still leave the paper here in case I protect my workspace. So I'm going to grab the card base, get the inside in, just so I don't lose that again. Haven't lost things too bad today. Usually I'm looking for stuff all the time. Put this inside. Still can't believe I colored his eyes. <laughs> Okay, so we've got that. I'm going to grab this piece. This was done with the um, oh, Christmas Tidings embossing folder. And now I want to make sure that all the words going horizontally now are upright. We've got a lot of them going up and down, but you don't have to worry about those. You just want to make sure the ones that are going this way are up where they should be. And I'm going to grab this piece of the DSP. This is a four by two inch piece. I'm going to turn this over. Yeah, the 
one side can look more Christmassy with this paper. The other side can be used all year long. So this is not just for Christmas. Okay, now this is going to go, doesn't matter, well, yeah, it does matter. I want it to go along the top, so make sure the words are right. I am going to turn it upside down, so that way I can see that I'm getting this right along the edge. So I don't want to get my head in the way of the camera. So there we go. So that is on there. Now this ribbon here, this is retiring. The video is definitely not going to do it justice. This is iridescent, um, the white iridescent ribbon. It goes along with in the suite that this paper is in. Oh, thanks, Be Becky. I'm glad you're loving them all. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Ann. You just ordered the, oh, that embossing folder when it went on sale. I got it full price, but yeah, you're going to love it. I really like it a lot, Ann. You're going to like it. So this is a six inch, yes, yeah, six inch piece. I wish you could see it's got that iridescent look. So it's got a bunch of different colors in with it. It looks really cool, this paper. I'm going to grab my, uh, tear and tape here. And I think I said this, this ribbon is retiring. It's one of the ones that's retiring. That going. So I'm going to put this right along. It's a little bit see-through. I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah, you can see the DSP under there. So I'm kind of bringing it down because I kind of want it over the shaded spruce layer a little more. Bring this around. Put the adhesive on there. So it's, the edge is overlapping the DSP a little bit because it's a little thicker. You can't see through it. But that center part, oops, I lost. Oh, I've got it on my finger. <laughs> I usually have it on my thumb. There we go. Push these down. Now that that ribbon is on there, and you can still play around with it and move it around even after it's attached. That's why I don't put any ribbon, any adhesive under here. You can on some things you may want to. On this one, you don't need to. And it also makes it so I can move that around a little bit if I need to. So I'm going to put some adhesive on the corners and right across the top here. Get my take your pick tool and get that paper backing off. And oops, now that time, there must have been an air bubble. So I'm going to push that down again. I'm going to go to the other side this time. There we go. Now it's coming off easy. So whenever that happens, just push down and make sure it's attached really good to the paper. And this is just going to go right here in the center. So these are super simple cards. I didn't want to make them too hard because this is just a cute set. You didn't, don't need to go nuts over it. The images are what make the cards so cute. I love it when that happens. Oh, thanks, Rita. Yeah, the colors are great in this paper. I really, I would not have come up with these color combos on my own. A lot of times that's how I get my color combos. I just go along with the DSP I'm using. So this one, I think I told you the size is two and three quarter by three and a half. This is lemon lime twist at three by three and three quarter. So just a little bit larger than the white one. And that goes right here. Now this time I don't have a greeting to pop up. It's already on this one. So I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to put some dimensionals on here. This time I'll use the full-sized ones. Put one in each corner. And then because this is a big piece, I'm going to put one there in the middle. That should hold it. And I always push those down, make sure they're on there good. I didn't used to push them down. And there were times they would fall off. So I, now I always push them down. Sometimes they don't get a, attached real good. Pop that up a little bit. Looks like it sagged in the middle. I'm going to be covering it up so it doesn't matter. Now, I'm going to bring it down a little bit lower than center, not much. Just, you, well, because right in the middle, it kind, kind of covers up that DSP a little more. So I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. There we go. So there is, I'm getting out of the screen again. Sorry about that. There is that. Next time, I'll make sure the camera is in a different spot. Now, this time, for my pearls, I'm going to use the uh, Parakeet Party. Yes, it's a different green, but it still looks good. Oh, thanks, Jenny. I'm glad you like it. And Crystal. Yeah, aren't these greens really pretty? I really like it. I'm going to have to remember that all three of these greens look really good together. I didn't really think they would, but I, I really like it. So this is actually another green, but I think it matches really good with the lemon lime twist and the granny apple green. Probably more than lemon lime twist. So I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to kind of go around the greening here. 
put one there. I put one right here and another one real close to this one. But you could add more, put them wherever you want to. But that is the last card. Yeah, aren't those really neat, Robin? I really like those too. I have to admit, I've never used all three of those greens together, and I really like it. Okay, let's bring all these in. So these are my non traditional Christmas cards. I always like to do at least one set of non traditional, especially at least color wise. Um, the images definitely still look Christmassy, but the colors are totally different from what you would normally use on Christmas cards. Oh, thanks, Deborah. Oh, this last one was your favorite of the three. I do like those greens together. I think that's probably why I like that one a lot too. I might like these images better, but I like how this one turned out with the with the color scheme. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed today's class. It's like I said, it's been a couple weeks since we had Thanksgiving last week. Now I will be doing. Go ahead and switch my screen here for a second. There we go. Um, I am going to be doing two more lives. I think it's two more lives. Maybe it's three more lives. Do, do, do. Let me look at the calendar. <laughs> it's like when it gets too close to Christmas, I'm, yeah, I'm doing one on the 6th and the 13th. Yeah, two more after this one. That's right. So we'll have two more lives and then I'll take a little break for Christmas and New Year's. So the 20th, I'm sorry. I'm doing the dates wrong. The 7th and the 14th are the next two lives. Then uh, the 21st and the 28th will be a break. And then we'll start up again uh, January 4th after New Year's. So that'll be the next one. So that is the schedule. I still can't believe we're at the end of 2023. Can't believe I'm talking about getting ready for Christmas already. Oh, thanks, Anne. Thanks, Christy and Crystal and Marlene. Oh, I looked away and I got a bunch of people liking them. Polly and Deb. Oh, Deborah said she liked this one the best. Okay, that was my last one. So thanks, guys. Oh, thanks, Melissa. I'm glad you liked them. And I didn't see you earlier. Glad you're here, Melissa. <laughs> Hope your moving's going good. That's one thing. On here, sometimes I don't see the full name. And that time I saw the part of Mitchell, so I knew, knew who you were. Okay. I do believe that's all I need to go over. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I hate it when I do that. Oh, well, it must not have been important. Oh, thanks, Patty. These animals make such cute cards. Yes, they do. I'm going to go ahead and go back to that so you guys can see those one more time. They are so pretty. So pretty and cute. More cute than pretty. <laughs> I don't know why I said pretty. And I, boy, I wish the colors showed up better. If you want to see the colors look better, come back. I think I'm posting the, this card. The link to the post in my blog is going to show up on Friday. This one will show up on Sunday. And this one will show up on Tuesday. So I'll have those links on my YouTube channel. I'll be down below in the video description. You can also go to my blog. You can see the, it's createwithchristy.com. So it's www.createwithchristy.com. You can go there on Friday, Sunday, and Tuesday, and you'll be able to see the colors a lot better when you look at the pictures. This video definitely got them looking a little funky. Oh, thanks, Christy. I'm glad you uh, got to watch. Yeah, I hope you have a good week too, Crystal. Okay, that is it. Hopefully next week I'll get the uh, new camera working better and the colors will look better. This camera, that's got the right colors. For, just because I'm going to use that stupid app so my phone will work, it's not looking too good. So I think that's it. I want to make sure I didn't miss any comments. Looks like everybody's ready to go night-night. I know I am. It's been a good day. Got a lot done, but long day. So like, um, I think that's it. Yep, that is it. I'm sorry. I keep thinking I'm forgetting something. So I will see you guys all next week. Bye.